<laughs> 30 seconds. Still good? I still. Yeah? <laughs> Is the audio also uh, good? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your talk, Theo. It was really nice. Hopefully, you all had a nice uh, dinner. Um, the next half an hour or so, I'm gonna talk about my IR journey. I started almost a year ago, so I'm trying to compress a lot of days in uh, only 30 minutes. And uh, I worked with uh, Dali a little bit, Midjourney, most of the time, and, and now I'm working with Stable Diffusion. And I, um, yeah, I'm going to show you some things that I experienced together with the prompts. For example, a child writing a will, photographic. Um, and I want to show you that sometimes it's really real and it's also dangerous uh, these days. Um, short about me, so this is me, Ruland. I graduated AI, so for me it's really interesting to see what's happening here uh, in the AI world. Although I'm definitely not an expert, I know a little bit of the basics. This has been a long time ago, so everything's changed. But if somebody says neural network, I kind of know what's happening. Uh, and from since 2011, a co-founder of Pinch. We do mobile apps. We don't really do a lot of AI, but now everything is coming back again, so it's really cool for me. Um, just as a reminder, I'm going really quickly through all the slides. Uh, if you missed the prompt, feel free to reach out or take a photo or whatever. Uh, if you want any tips afterwards, also feel free to reach out. Um, but these days, I'm a pretty lazy prompt engineer. My prompt only one or two words. I'm, uh, I started beginning with a really long sentences and big prompts. But these days, I'm just doing it with one or two uh, words or tokens. I think this one was in the invite, or was another one. A uh, full-length portrait of a neon glowing cyborg. And sometimes I wing in an artist to make it even more authentic. Um, but first things first, Dali. I got really excited when they announced it in January 21 with this tweet. Um, I was like, well, I, I want to play with this tool. But it took one half years before I even could uh, access. I, was a, I had to sign up. And it was on a beta li or on a waiting list and uh, still had to wait a long time. It was really annoying. But I finally got access and I was finally able to use uh, DALI. I'm not sure who of you not heard of DALI. Everybody, good. DALI is really easy to use uh, in comparison to the other systems I'm going to mention. Uh, of course, it's from Open OpenAI, you all know. Uh, when I used it, it was free, so that was maybe also a reason to keep using it. Uh, right now, there's a credit system. You have to pay uh, $15 to get 115 credits, and every prompt you, you type in costs a credit. Uh, it supports the in and out painting, which is really nice. I'll come back to that later. Um, but now, I think the development and the quality as well is really behind. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, they're focusing now on ChatGPT, so I kind of understand why. Um, maybe short what out painting <coughs> means. Um, you see it a lot now in, in Adobe Photoshop. So this is me again. Uh, and you can select a square in in wherever you want. Basically now chose the bottom and uh, you give it a prompt, whatever you want to uh, do with it. In this case, I want to uh, wear red pants and I got a red pants. But you can do this al around the whole thing and you can be really creative. <coughs> then as well, short out, uh, sorry. Oh, this is, the, this is in painting. Uh, you can remove something from the image and give it a prompt as well, and then it will uh, generate w whatever you want to wear. So in this case, I tried, I really like red, so I tried a red T-shirt. <laughs> um, I did this last week, so you can already see that the quality, I mean, with weird hands, maybe a bit more muscles, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of course, a bit neck, weird neck. Um, but anyway, it's really cool that you can generate this within within seconds. And I finally got access, so I'll go a little bit back in time. I got access, and then you're sitting behind your computer, and you can basically type in whatever you want. But then nothing really, I mean, you try some things that you, other people see doing, but you have no idea what to do. Um, but I really liked it, so I tried to find a niche, and I saw somebody uh, creating uh, monsters or fluffy creature every day, so ah, maybe I'll do something similar. And one of the, when you start Dali, one of the things you see is a robot. So, well, I'm just going to create a robot that does something every day. And I created an Instagram account. And I was like, yeah, maybe I get a lot of followers. And uh, it's so cool. And I generated lots of them. Oh, 
just kept on going and I can fill, I don't know how many other slides, but this is the last slide. <laughs> and there was a, at the moment, like, ah, this is actually quite boring. I'm kind of done with it. And um, maybe I should try something else. And then somebody said, well, why not try my journey? So I gave that a try. Uh, I started my journey around version three, m just got released in that month. Um, and um, uh, right now they're on 5.1, so it goes really, the development just keeps on going and going. They're working on version six now. Um, just a few minutes, who of you have, have not worked with my journey? Everybody? Oh, some, okay, cool. Um, one of the things when I started using my journey was Discord. I'm a technical guy. I'm not really maybe I'm not up to date anymore. I used a little bit Discord with work, but using software as a service when you use to DALI, really easy web interface. Now you have to work with Discord. And who, I don't know who of you does not know Discord. You can see it like a, maybe a Slack on steroids or something. There's a lot of things happening. Maybe a little bit of hives in there as well. Um, a lot of things moving around and then you have to type in some, somewhere your prompt and you're afraid that everybody will read that prompt and like, what's going on? So actually I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to use it again. But then the next day, uh, I'm going to give it another try. And uh, luckily I did. My <laughs> um, journey does not have the in and out painting. I know they're working on it, but their model was really focusing on quality, which you will you see later. Uh, they're really good at quality. Uh, so that comes with a cost. And right now in painting is not really possible. I'm painting a little bit, but uh, they, they're focusing on other things now between in and out painting. So the in painting is you remove something from an image and the out painting is you um, the do, 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 do you add something in the outside. Yeah, the, the keywords were wrong on the slides. Sorry about that. Um, sometimes it's down. It's also annoying. Um, the one of the reasons I didn't want to give a live demo because it's sometimes really slow. You cannot really rely on it. Uh, and they set up it's such a way that the prompts are open. So when you start using the journey, everybody can see your prompts. And of course, if you pay more money, you can hide it. Uh, but they, they thought it was funny to do it that way. Uh, but their models that mentioned before as well, they're quite, you have no idea how they're trained. You don't know what's in there. Um, it's quite secret. It's their, their money maker. Um, and they also have a uh, not suitable for work filter, which is fine, but the trigger is really frequently really annoying. If you want to do something with the red or blood and whoop, you get a filter and it's not allowed. Uh, although they made some improvements also with AI to make it even better. But that, yeah, it's an American company, so uh, yeah, <laughs> they're really playing it safe. The pros, it's really good quality, uh, dangerously as well. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of examples of stuff on uh, that, that's near real. Uh, they're looking even into watermarking the images, so uh, they, they, they can quickly see if it's uh, real or not. Even with the elections, they're thinking in America, the elections, they're thinking of blocking uh, some keywords. So you can uh, generate uh, uh, cool things with it. Uh, where Dolly was square, uh, mostly. Um, my journey supports a lot of different aspects, ratios. You, you can go rectangle, you can go square, you can do whatever you want. And they update regularly. So uh, now it's just images, but they're working on 3D and animations. So, uh, and also on the web environment. So I'm not sure if that's replacing Discord, but it's something they're working on. Um, yeah, I put the, the money in pros. I'm not sure if it's a pro, but it's $10, $30, and $60, depending on how many images you want to create in the faster thing. When you pay a little bit less money, you, it takes longer to generate your image. Um, so I was finally going through my Discord uh, struggles, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to try out this tool. And I type in my first prompt, and I was still into the, the robot theme. <coughs> and I was kind of a little bit disappointed. It was not really the image I was looking for. <coughs> Um, but I just kept trying, luckily, so never give up. Um, and I tried something else, like a wooden robot with glass eyes. And now I finally thought, okay, this is way more cool than Dali. It was more playful, and now you can really see the <laughs> textures, the reflections in the eyes. Okay, this is something I want to keep on working with. Um, I still tried robot things, so I thought maybe mixing it with, uh, with heroes or with, uh, with the turtles is fun to do. Um, not really robotic, robotic, but maybe with the glowing eyes. But uh, yeah, lots of fun trying out different things. Uh, Sonic as well, I tried out Sonic. Uh, this one was really capturing um, uh, the photographic style. Uh, also, I did a lot of um, stuff, keywords in the prompt at the end, like hyper-realistic, real, lifelike, ultra-realistic, and I uh, tried all different things. Um, if you want to try out this prompt now, it probably doesn't work because this is uh, version 3 still. 
Um, and then they released the test P-Flex, so they were experimenting with the photographic style. Again, I tried robot Wonder Woman, although it's not super robotic. But when I created this image, I was like, wow, this is almost super real. But when you zoom in, it was still a bit, Mwah. but from a distance, you're like, okay, this is pretty cool. It's going somewhere. Of course, not everything works out of the box. <laughs> Although maybe you could argue that it is kind of a spider woman, but uh, this is happening a lot with the different legs, different arms. Um, so it's like, okay, what's going on here? But you can, you can just keep on trying and then eventually something will uh, work out. Although even I retouched it a little bit with Photoshop. Um, so now I want to show you a bit of the progress it made. So again, my uh, turtle, uh, do two different prompts. Uh, one is the one you saw before and the other one, I also put a background in there. Uh, in the New York streets uh, with the shiny cybernetic suit. It's pretty cool. But then version four got released and I was trying out the same prompts and then it was a bit more photographic. It's like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then you have to try everything out again and it's like, okay, cool, you can post everything on Instagram. Oh, look at me, new feature, shiny. <laughs> and then version five came out and it was even more realistic. And I, I tried with the uh, uh, robotic team, but even the normal Ninja Turtles came out, come out really, really cool. And you can really see the, the shiny on the skin and it's like you can grab it. Of course, still robots, so I had to try cyborgs as well. Uh, oh, I think this one is an invitation. Uh, full length portrait of neon glowing cyborg. Uh, sometimes it's fun to put an artist in there so you can uh, try out different styles. Uh, I know one of the disadvantages of using these kind of tools is that artists are afraid it will uh, kind of steal their work. Uh, I'm aware of that, but I've never learned so many different artists because you were going to Google them and see what kind of art they're making. So that's also one of the advantages. Um, with version five, I realized you can uh, make art shorter uh, prompts. So in this case, the Pope Francis wearing a pink suit. Uh, of course, we all have seen the puffer uh, the, in, a, in a, the other outfit. Um, it's quite realistic, but maybe good to know if you really look at the details, sometimes the fingers are a little bit like, hmm, it's not totally correct. Maybe if you zoom in in the ears, you kind of have a similar feeling, but sh really short prompt just gives you a photo, realistic, and it's like, okay, really cool. Uh, sometimes I felt creative and tried out uh, totally random stuff, like the Michelin, the man, the Bibentum, uh, putting on a neon suit on. Thought it was cool. Uh, long exposure is also fun to experiment with. Just give keywords long exposure and uh, cool effects can, uh, can be created. Um, I tried, yeah, it was funny to make a man wearing a TV and then I generated the image in my journey, but then later in stable diffusion, I generated a few hundred images and stuck them together. So yeah, you get these cool effects. Uh, but there's also apps around in the app store where you can add like uh, uh, things with steam and water and uh, you can go nuts. Um, when I'm not really, in, don't really, uh, cannot find any things I can work on, I join uh, challenges. Um, it's kind of cool to do. Um, people, this is all, you cannot win anything with it. Uh, they just give one word a day or maybe sometimes two and you have to generate art and everybody's collecting them and uh, uh, you have lots of fun. So in this case, the theme was fashion show and I thought it was maybe fun to wear a suit huge fire outfit again pretty short prompt but yeah you can generate really cool stuff with it another day the theme was train and i thought maybe cool to generate the train monster three words insane train monster and uh, exactly what i wanted <laughs> <laughs> the other uh, theme was uh, teal so uh, <laughs> i gotta gotta try obama somewhere I don't know why I uh, came up with spandex suit, but um, <laughs> Obama wearing teal spandex suit. And super real, even the hands are real. And um, yeah, this is, this is insane. Balloons also, another theme. Yeah, I was doing suits things. Uh, just why not try balloon suit? If you've never seen a balloon suit, this is how it looks. It is really real. You can imagine somebody wearing the suit on the streets, but that, I don't think it ever happened. Maybe it did. Kimono, of course, was also a theme. Why not give everybody kimono? <laughs> In this case, I tried a really long prompt to make it a bit more unique. Chubby yeah, Chubby Trump. And <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the other teams was Chubby and I combined them a little bit. Um, one of the cool things you can do is also upload a photo of yourself and uh, turn it the other way around, generate a prompt from your photo. 
Uh, this is a photo I just took here in the office, and it will say uh, dentist Dana, I don't know what, a cute snapshot in the style of uh, handsome, so that's uh, maybe cool. <laughs> Smile core, but crinkly, crinkled, wrinkled, maybe not so much, but <laughs> this is really cool if you're uh, out of ideas or you want to know how somebody, uh, somebody else made the prompt, you can just upload the photo and see uh, how it looks like. Another cool image is uh, blending two images. Yep, I'm making fun of myself here. It basically looks like a monkey. <laughs> this is a really cool feature. You can just really create unique artwork. Yeah. Another cool feature is uh, remixing. So yeah, you can type in your prompt. Um, you, there, this is actually my journey. So you type in slash imagine, you can type in your prompt. And then you get four results and you can choose which one you want to pick. The U means upscale, make it a little bit bigger. And with the V button, used to be the variant button, you can click on it and it will generate a similar image, but slightly different. Um, that you can change it optionally to, to remix the prompt. So you can change the entire prompt. So in this case, <coughs> I replaced the dog by a cat. I tap in the button, change the prompt and tick submit. And you will get four similars. Uh, of course, this was not the first try, I have to be honest but it will give you uh, the same setting, but a different topic. So it could be really useful to, to tweak around a little bit. Uh, and this is the enlarged version. <coughs> um, lately, I've been using the reference image a lot. So you upload your own image. You start to prompt with this image and you type in something you want. Uh, this is really useful if you wanna uh, combine or generate combinations of certain topics. Um, yeah, old man in this case gonna show you later. <coughs> uh, there's a parameter you can use, IW, the IW parameter, and you can say, say how much weight you want for that particular image. So um, you can easily uh, tweak uh, with the results. So in this case, I, uh, <coughs> I started with a toddler, of course, really funny with celebrities. <laughs> and it's, you can kind of see how the system works. It will get some features from the image. It will, um, uh, like my hair, in this case, I put in brown hair, but it's not even necessary. Uh, but I've even, uh, as a reference, the real reference, this is me in a younger version. <laughs> so it's definitely not similar, but you can see uh, how it um, you know, generates, make, make learn that the toddler has a soft skin and that kind of stuff. <laughs> the older version is also uh, really handy um, if you want to know how you're going to look like. <coughs> uh, and I also made one smiling, so maybe uh, thought that it was funny. <laughs> this is really spooky and also, but really funny. Um, you can also really make fun of yourself by um, doing the same trick, just uploading your image, use that URL that you got and uh, type in something else and see how you would look like with a goofy face. This is me in a goofy face, duck face, <laughs> and then maybe Pixar style. So it's, it's quite, quite good with just uploading one image, you don't have to train a model. Um, and I was thinking, well, actually, it's working already pretty good. If, if you upload an image of yourself, how would it work if you already use an, an, like an image that's already in a model, so to speak? Um, and I started uh, winging with celebrities. And it was, uh, for example, generating a photo of Julia Roberts. And the name sounded familiar, uh, similar, like a lion. So first of all, this is an image created in the journey. Um, and then... Uh, you use that, you generate the public URL, and then you type in line face. It's actually pretty uh, pretty good. And uh, it was kind of addictive, so I tried all kinds of people doing this. Uh, Ed Sheeran with the shape fa sheep face. <coughs> <laughs> and uh, Elon Musk, of course. I was afraid to publish this on Twitter, so I didn't do that. <coughs> <coughs> the Musk, Elon Musk red. <laughs> Fruit and vegetables are also funny. Uh, Tom Cruise. That sounded like tomato, so I did tomato. <laughs> <coughs> and he was also sweating a little bit in this one. <coughs> uh, yeah, I, I just generated lots of them and uh, lots of fun. And um, yeah, this is just amazing how well it uh, works. Uh, animal combination, I started being afraid maybe will people would sue me because I would make fun of them. So I started doing just animals. Uh, kangaroo, and then combination with a chicken or a rooster. <laughs> the journey does not disappoint. <coughs> Apparently, it knows the chickens are always uh, fried. <laughs> <laughs> a duck with a crocodile. So again, say a photo of a duck and make it a crocodile. <laughs> it's kind of cool, huh? <clears throat> I love all the shiny stuff on there. 
uh, penguin. I did it again with penguin, with a kitten. <laughs> yeah. Um, and combina combining little big and small elephants is also a really cool effect. So I started with an elephant <coughs> and combining with a bee. Also pretty <laughs> epic. <coughs> uh, elephants are really cool, so I tried lots of them. Uh, and it's really amazing how well it takes the features and combines them. Um, yeah, some tips using Midjourney <coughs> may be handy. Uh, I found out you have to use exact words, so if you made a typo, uh, yeah, you don't really get good results. Um, it's good to know the words in the beginning of the prompt have a, a they weigh more than at the end. <coughs> there are some tricks if you have a really long prompt uh, to repeat certain words at the end. There's also some other tricks, but uh, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of randomization going on. So if you try a lot of times, you eventually get good results as well. If Midjourney releases a new version, um, yeah, the chances are big it won't work anymore, but you have to tweak it a little bit. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, people collecting all the different styles, all the different artists. Um, I don't have a QR code, but it's the Beatly URL you can enter and it will go give you a spreadsheet with all the artists in there and if you like something you can use that in your prompt to generate a cool art. Um, so the image itself are generated around 1024 by 1024 depending on the aspect ratio and there's a lot of cool upscalers around that you can use to enlarge your image uh, without losing a lot of quality so don't use the Photoshop uh, well at least from the older versions. Uh, because that's looking at the pixel uh, pixels itself and all the upscalers today are made in AI with AI and you can go nuts get create 8000 by 8000 pixels without losing too much quality <coughs> um, so right now I'm um, I'm also uh, working with stable diffusion um, not a lot because my journey is really addictive and I would like to to make cool stuff uh, but Stable Diffusion is also a really cool platform to work with. Uh, it takes a bit more time to generate the uh, images and videos. But uh, yeah, it's definitely worth, worth to have a look at it as well. <coughs> it also has a lot of advantages in comparison with Midjourney. Um, for example, Stable Diffusion can run locally. So Stable Diffusion also has a, is, is more made from an open perspective. So it's open source. So people can play around with the model. You know exactly what images the model was trained for. There's way more freedom. People are going nuts with uh, extensions and plugins. It's not there's no downtime, so that's pretty handy, uh, and it's free to use. So uh, and you can you can do whatever uh, whenever you want. It does support in and out painting. It basically supports all the features I just shown you. Although the blending I'm, I haven't seen yet, but it's probably already wrote an, uh, an extension for it. Uh, the aspect ratio support is limited. Um, all the models are usually trained in one resolution, and if you use that model, it's usually good to use that same resolution that the model is trained for. Uh, and of course, the hands and faces, uh, they're not really uh, the, the normal stable diffusion models. Uh, they're not really well trained for to, to generate the faces and the hands. Uh, but you can go to a website and download heaps of other models that have a lot of uh, better quality in hands and faces. And there's lots of paid services, for example, uh, uh, Dream Studio from Stability AI itself. Uh, you pay some money to use uh, maybe other models and features and stuff. Um, and when you first start to use it, uh, you will see this web UI that somebody else made again, because Stable Diffusion started as prompt, uh, where you can enter your prompt <coughs> and then generate some images. Uh, but people go went nuts and they went uh, build all web UIs and features and stuff. And when you start, the first time you're like, whoa, this is a lot of, Im what am I going to do with this toggle? What am I going to do with this? <coughs> but if you invest a bit of time in it, you will, uh, you will get better in it. Of course, YouTube videos, there are lots of them. They can help you out a lot. Um, yeah, you just also saw a video of Stable Diffusion. Uh, this is one I made as well. Uh, you can make this with the forum as an extension. <coughs> so. Um, uh, that's really cool. You can just generate heaps of images that a little bit look like each other and you can enter the parameters and different prompts that has just changed to in different uh, uh, time. So this is 1200 frames and uh, yeah, just this is one of the first videos I made. And you see a little bit of the flickering, which is quite typical. Um, there's a l some workarounds to get less flickering, but this is the most, yeah, a lot of very typical uh, video. 
you don't have to understand all these settings, but it's just to get, get you an idea what's going on behind the scenes. So when you install it, you just basically have to tweak uh, some parameters. You can say the zoom level, so you can that depends on which frame you are in, uh, the translation, uh, the, the speed of translation, and you can say the, the prompt where to start with and how to change it in the next frame. Yeah, in this case, you use the long prompt. I've got two daughters, so that's why I'm doing this uh, Disney stuff. Uh, with the fairies, but um, yeah, the, the prompt is portrait photograph of Tinkerbell, and then the next frame I changed it to the silver mist fairy, and then the other fairy. I didn't check if it was correct, but yeah, you can go. You can also change, it, do entirely other prompts. It's totally up to you. Um, other cool things you can play around in Stable Diffusion is um, an extension control net with a scribble in there. Might have seen uh, examples as well. These are my drawing skills, so that's why I'm really happy with uh, the, all these tools. You just have to type in some text and uh, I'm, I'm an artist. But it's really cool. You can just yeah, draw a bicycle, give a prompt. Uh, I think in this case it was just a photo of a bike and it will generate uh, a bike in that shape. So that's really, really cool. I also tried it with, uh, I don't know what it is, a creature. Uh, sometimes it doesn't really quite understand what's happening, like with the belly. Uh, it makes it a burger, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Other uh, options you have is uh, there's way lots of them, but I'm only covering a few. Open pose is really funny. You, there is this uh, stick figure you can drag around and then uh, set, put in a prompt what you want, and it will generate uh, a, a figure that is doing this pose. And it's really funny to do all kinds of weird poses, but um, yeah, this is really impressive uh, what what's, what's uh, available in the, with stable diffusion and what you can do. You can combine these things as well. So that's what I tried here. So I used the deform extension. I did the, the pose detection thing because it can you can upload the video and it will subtract all the frames from it. It will detect what kind of pose you are in. Um, I uploaded one image to try to prompt uh, to, to for me to be a robot. I became a female robot, <laughs> but that's OK. So this is the first video. I'm doing a bit of funny faces, but too lazy to make another video. And then uh, I did all these steps. There, I actually followed a YouTube tutorial in this case, um, where it re um, to to make your videos le less flickering, uh, you have to subtract keyframes from it. So big movements. Uh, you put those keyframes in a free tool as well, uh, EB Synth, and with FFmpeg you stick it all together, and you will end up like a video like this. There's still a little bit of flickering, but you can tweak it, of course. But uh, in this case, it took a long time to generate the video, and I was all right with the results. So you, yeah, it, but you can, uh, that's the cool thing. You can just try it out again and again and again until you're satisfied with the results. Uh, another video, I've seen this a lot on, on TikTok, is where you um, uh, make a video, and then all of a sudden, during the video, it will, you will go into the stable diffusion madness. And in this case, I took one frame from the video and I, uh, I took a frame from it and it will gradually change that frame. I will just show you uh, what this movie is about. I'm a pretty bad actor, so... Uh, <coughs> <laughs> and this is just a few frames in the uh, cyborg in the subway and then, uh, yeah, you can just take a fly through New York and be Spider-Man and, uh, yeah. So it's pretty cool. And this was also quite easy to make. So um, uh, the last thing I think I'm going to show you as an example is the music. So you can um, combine it with music as well. Um, because you have all these parameters you can change, you can do it on the beat of the music. Uh, I just downloaded the random techno MP3 from the internet. I used this website <coughs> where you can upload it. You get already for free oh, what, what the intensity has to be in a certain frame <coughs> and uh, you can change the prompt as well if you want <coughs> and you can really clearly see that it um, yeah moves on the on the beat of the music oh a pim pim <coughs> <Pim. coughs> yeah it just uh, goes on and on <coughs> it, um, Astronaut on a horse, that was a prompt, yeah. I don't know how long it takes, but... Uh, 
There are some other options you can do in, uh, in Midjourney. Um, oh, oh, sorry, yeah, with stable diffusion. So in this case, we generated an image in Midjourney, or JSON did actually. Uh, then you can do a depth map calculation also in stable diffusion. And then with that, you can slightly move around in the environment you created. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so it an, adds an, another dimension to the things you're making. And it will look a bit like this. So this is the image, and this is depth map, and you put it in Blender. Uh, and then based on Blender, you can yeah, move it around a little bit, so you have the feeling you're in a 3D world. Pretty cool, huh? Um, yeah, a recap. Um, there's a tool for everybody. Uh, if you just want to lazy, do something quickly, you can use Dolly. Uh, Midjourney is also quite easy if you uh, don't have problems with Discord. Uh, stable diffusion is a bit more complicated, but if you have a bit more time, it's also amazing. Um, yeah, my point of view is that Dolly is a bit behind, and Midjourney is at the moment the, one of the best uh, uh, generative AI tools at the moment. Uh, stable diffusion does not have the quality, but does have all the other options, and, and people are training Midjourney uh, models. They, they output a lot of uh, uh, images generated in Midjourney, and they learn their own models, and that you can use in stable diffusion again. Um, so it's pretty pretty cool stuff around to play with all kinds of stuff you want. Um, yeah, if you want to follow me, I just added the QR code as well. I put all these nonsense on the Robots Rule account if you want to have a, a fun uh, day. But um, I'm also on LinkedIn, so that's also to follow. Thank you very much for listening. That was it. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> <So, yeah. laughs> Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you uh, when you did the, the music thing, how big is the prompt for that? The pr you can make it whatever prompt you want. Yeah, it doesn't matter. For example, for that guy. Um, I can look it up later, but uh, I think it was a guy in the playing ping pong and then some, some random stuff I found online. So, so basically just yeah, 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 yeah. You can just do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you were yep. first. <laughs> the, um, you took your face and you made an, a robot animation of it. Um, let's say you wanted to choose one of the robot faces. Can you do that? That yours was constantly changing. And yeah. I've seen that a lot in the videos yeah. that you made. Can you can you create consistency within the variation? No, you can do, you can do, you can do with keyframes, getting them out, but then you still have to morph between the keyframes. Yeah. Um, but you you don't get exactly the same results yet. Uh, but I, I don't I'm not surprised if that's going to yeah, change. Yeah, yeah. But you weren't able. Did you try to do that? No, I didn't try. No, this was for me already good enough. Um, but yeah, I think if you keep on trying and tweaking, and, and there's so many sliders with different settings, and uh, you will eventually create a bit more smoother video. Um, yeah, was it the smoothness so much as the, the fact that at one point it has a line one side? And yeah, really you, like you can get it out if you want. It takes a bit more time to tweak. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you wanted to add that to yeah, you? Yeah, the, there is opportunity to get the same result, yeah. but it won't be exactly the same result. You have to, It'll be more same. You have, to have the same seed. Right. Yeah, this is with the same seed. It is yeah, yeah, it's the same seed. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's more smooth. Yeah. If you use different seed, then you get total madness, but uh, yeah. yeah. The model, yeah, yeah, how it's trained, yeah, yeah. So right now, for example, Midjourney does not is not really well with the toes, for example. So they trained a new model with a lot of uh, they they upload a lot of fingers before they were really bad, and so they said, please upload as many uh, f f uh, fingers, photos of fingers, if you want. And now they're a bit better with it, but they said, yeah, we're still pretty bad with toes. So please, uh, everybody, upload the photos of toes so we can get better with that. <laughs> so it's just a matter of uh, how many. Uh, yeah, it's a weird example. <laughs> But it's, it's just a matter of uh, how many photos are in the database and it knows about hands and how they position and uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, more, The more data, the better the model uh, gets. Yeah. How do you think these kind of tools can translate into maybe marketing or business related Yeah, f you can, you can u just use it for marketing depending yeah. on your context. How do, but you, yeah. how do you imagine that happening? Because of course it's all fun and creative. Things. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah.
that yeah, you, you can you can you yeah. definitely use it. Um, I've, I've been focusing on portraits and people a lot, but uh, you can do it for whatever you want. And it's just really well, it can generate uh, lots of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ach, hier Tim. Ja, du hast über die Prompt gesprochen, die Wortung in der Bildung. Ja. Aber ich glaube nicht, dass du viel über die Negative Prompt gesprochen hast. Das ist wahr. Ja, du kannst es machen. Ich benutze es nicht so oft, eigentlich. Also, für mich funktioniert es. Wie hast du das gefunden? Es funktioniert gut. Ich habe gesehen, dass sie das viel machen. Und ich habe einfach die Prompt gemacht. 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 Um, I do that sometimes with my journey. I'm not using it that often. No. Uh, the thing is, you can just generate and generate many different things, and eventually the thing you want to generate will will come out. And it's also for me not super important to have it exactly right. Um, uh, yeah. Tim, no? It's a good question. Yeah, um, th they can use this basically. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, Photoshop just released a beta version where you can basically do this kind of stuff as well. Uh, I was not really uh, uh, overwhelmed by the quality yet, but it, it's a matter of time, of course. Um, so yeah, the, the designers can already use it in, in Photoshop and in, in Illustrator probably as well. And uh, yeah, the journey in general. So can uh, but yeah, Midjourney is still the best uh, out there, I think, quality-wise. But uh, maybe in most cases, other tools will be good as well. I'm, I was focusing really on photographic uh, style, uh, so I've not been experiencing a lot of experience with different styles. Uh, so yeah, it depends also on your use case. Uh. So oh. yeah, I guess well, uh, <laughs> quick question. Um, I've heard rumors that um, the AI starts hallucinating at a certain point. Did you experience that in your journey? <laughs> <laughs> well, you get some really weird results. So uh, yeah, sometimes it's just uh, what am I generating now? Especially if you want to combine different topics. Uh, if you would, if you would like, for example, the tomato cruise one. If I've tried it in a normal prompt, but then you get Tom, uh, Tom Cruise hugging a tomato, and then instead of <laughs> combining it together, um, it's funny maybe as well. But. Uh, you have to start you can refine it as well. Yeah, uh, sometimes you don't get it really right, like the eye with the waterfall. That's something that didn't work out really well. So you just keep on trying and trying and trying and trying until you get the right result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You tried by using, using different prompts. Yeah, the the make the remixing prompts or just the all new prompts. So you can yeah yeah. Yeah 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 3d models I think that's yeah. uh, the, the next step um, so uh, I don't know how that's gonna look how it's gonna work uh, that there's also some prototypes out there that can do it I don't know how mid journey it's gonna gonna do mm -hmm. but it will be uh, the models you can rotate and zoom in and zoom out and yeah export. Export, yeah definitely yeah yeah I think so can I follow up with that? there's yeah. something that I saw that's coming out in June where if they take a picture of a dog and they turn it like 90 degrees. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah prov most probably uh, it's yeah. no. No, no, I did no, no. It was quite amazing. Like the table yeah. here, you can't actually turn it without getting occlusions and weird holes and things like yeah. that. Yeah, you can do a lot of with the depth map uh, feature, so it's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. It's still only 2D depth yeah. mapping. Kind yeah, of you, you mean real 3D. Yeah, I yeah. want yeah. a real 3D, or at least to look like the situation yeah. moves from I haven't I haven't played around with that. Uh, okay, but yeah. you don't know anything in your experience. No, no, no. A lot of hands, though. I don't know which yeah, yeah. time. <laughs> uh, James. Yeah, so you clearly learned a lot of stuff for like prompt engineering and stuff. You tried lots of things. You say you follow up the YouTube tutorials and you've kind of been doing it for uh, you know over a year. Maybe you're a bit more of an early adopter than a lot of other people. Um, so I guess how big a difference is there between like an experienced, knowledgeable prompt engineer and also do you think that like companies would be looking to employ someone like who's <coughs> truly an excellent prompt engineer. Yeah, so yeah I've seen people making really long and really unique prompts and really cool stuff that I have no idea how to make yet. So I don't see myself as a, as a expert in, in prompts. Like mentioned before, I'm now doing just one word in the prompt, so uh, I'm kind of lazy there. But you can really make really unique artwork or things with, with really long prompts and a lot of negative words and tweak it around. So. Uh, 
yeah, I think uh, you can become really good in it. I don't know if it's really uh, useful, but yeah. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know actually. Yeah, maybe uh, in the artistic world, everything you create yeah. is, is your from yourself, but uh, I don't know how that works. Yeah. Yeah. Use yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people uh, definitely uh, using ChatGPT to uh, to to get to create prompts. Yeah. 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 This is a really expensive, uh, like the stable diffusion. Was it stable diffusion? It was six hundred thousand dollars to just train the first model. Uh, but I can imagine that these kind of models with Midjourney, they're way more money to to generate. Uh, but that's why they also ask money for it. Uh, they don't even. They used to have a free m uh, model as well, but they stopped doing it because they they just don't. They want to. Because all the CPU power is uh, taken by all those free users, so they want to have the paid user a bit more. Uh, but I assume right now they're in kind of like land grab, especially because they want to get users and also because yeah. the content users is helpful. But I just wonder if you have any thoughts on how they might <coughs> begin to monetize. Like no, I think Midjourney was already profitable within a couple months. Just so from, just from I think so. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, so just from from users and uh, there, there's I think one million uh, Midjourney users uh, right now. So uh, yeah, they're making, uh, I think already uh, making some money. But again, they're, they're working really hard and, uh, and training the models costs also a lot of money. So, uh, but yeah, the model is the, the, is the money maker. The better your model is, uh, the, the, yeah, the more money you can make, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, good one. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, maybe lo one last question. Yeah. <laughs> well, was it last question? Is it possible to train your own style? They have like yeah. all these different things. Can you just say, here's a bunch of my pictures? Yeah. Train, yeah. This yeah. is my style, and you yeah. can use that in to generate more. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to do that for the presentation as well, but I didn't have time uh, for it because which, they. Which one did you use to do that? Uh, I, I haven't started yet. I think you can do it in Dream Studio, if I'm not mistaken, but you can also do it in Stable Diffusion. So, uh, yeah. This so yeah. 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 So, yeah, you can definitely do that. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Ooh. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for still being here, first of all. Uh, I know Roland kept you for a long time, uh, <laughs> but that was an interesting talk and he's done some cool stuff. Um, I'm going to do the opposite now <laughs> and uh, explain a little bit about the, uh, well, the API behind some of the stuff we are all probably uh, that, that got us involved in some of this uh, generative AI stuff, and that's the OpenAI API. And uh, whenever uh, Alex asked me for uh, uh, like a, a title for this talk, I, I maybe should not have picked such a clickbaity uh, title. Uh, and I think if I was to amend it now, I might call it something a bit more uh, safe, like uh, introducing you to the OpenAI API and suggesting how you might use it to your own, for your own ends, be them good, gray, or possibly even evil. <coughs> Don't be mean. <laughs> Obviously. Um, so, who am I? Why am I talking to you? Uh, I'm Alex, uh, also Alex. I, uh, I've been an Android developer here at Pinch for about four years. Uh, and if you're detecting an accent, it's because I'm from Northern Ireland. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I don't know why I'm here either. I started my software career actually with Windows Phone uh, and things like that, I mean Java development. But uh, here I am now, here you are now, and uh, let's go. <laughs> so, now that you know me, uh, Let's talk about this guy. Uh, a lot of you know this guy, I hope, uh, or you're in the wrong place. Um, probably a lot of you now actually are getting to know this guy too, uh, which is the uh, iOS equivalent of the previous guy. And hopefully not many of you know this guy, uh, some sort of imposter, I don't know. Uh, one million people got downloads of it, so 
it's got a good review, so I guess it's good, right? <laughs> yeah, well, we're not talking about any of them. We're talking about the API itself, so like what they talk to. And the reason why I would talk to you about the API is because uh, in exchange for just a credit card or something like that, you can get an API key, which will let you access all of the open AI models, such as DALI and Whisper and uh, ChatGPT, of course. Uh, each of these uh, models have kind of been set up differently. They are uh, different uh, superheroes in their own uh, right, and they have different uh, powers, abilities, and costs. So if you've heard names like Whisper, DALI, and ChatGPT, you're talking about open AI models. Uh, actually, this was not obvious to me when I started with this about two months ago or so. Um, I thought DALI was something else. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, actually, I have a slide on it maybe later if we have time, but uh, they called it Image GPT at the start, and I think that was the way better name because that describes to me what it does. Anyway, uh, these models are all just like part of families that are like uh, different things set up for you to do different things with. Uh, Chat GPT is the one that you probably know most about because it's the one we hear a lot about, and it's kind of like a general purpose version of, well, kind of a general purpose version of some of these things, but we'll get into that. So what is a GPT? Obviously, you all know what a GPT is. Actually, not everyone knows what a GPT is, but a generative pre-trained transformer. And Theo covered this quite well earlier, what a transformer is. And one of these things is used uh, in so many different ways now. But with ChatGPT, we're using, uh, well, I, I actually, there will be a test, so take this in. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of uh, on the left side here, uh, a GPT, uh, per se. And as you see, very clearly. The input is coming in here, in the input embedding, <laughs> which is where stuff happens. Stuff gets dropped out, and then we end up in one of these, a transformer block, where the transformation happens. And yeah, more obvious things happening here. Stuff goes in, math happens, stuff comes out <laughs> to the next block, and so on and so forth, all the way up until softmax, which is before output, obviously. So you don't need to know any of these things, just know that this transformer is taking some input, applying some stuff to it, and apply, bringing something out. The stuff, a lot depends on how that was trained or set up or what biases or weights are set in there. But uh, that's basically all it does. It's not actually that complicated apart from the math part. Um, one really interesting thing that you get from a GPT that I find interesting because I'm background in computing, uh, they are non-deterministic. Uh, that's not something you normally get in math or computing, uh, but it is something that is generally a, a, a thing that you would have to consider when you are working with a, a model that generates things like this. I wouldn't say everything, but uh, even ChatGPT, sorry, OpenAI <laughs> open say making the temperature zero will make outputs mostly deterministic, but small variability maybe. I think that's a lie. Uh, I, I <laughs> have tried lots of different uh, low temperature things and get very different results every time. So uh, keep that in mind uh, when you are working with things like this. But how can it actually do any of the math or that stuff? Well, tokens are kind of this thing that everything is broken down into in natural language processing. And really, they are just symbols, just like everything else in math, uh, symbols. Uh, you can do all kinds of calculations and add in weights and factors and other things, like the temperature and some other stuff. But that's all it really breaks down to. Uh, we see words, uh, the GPT does not see words and understand the words it's seeing. It doesn't see words, it sees numbers. And in fact, uh, tokens are not the same everywhere, uh, even, even from here to before. If you check carefully, it says NL, N and LP are two different tokens, whereas, well, this one is from Google in this diagram, it thinks L NLP is a token itself. Tokenizers are a thing. They are different in different places. There's maybe a standard coming now. I actually don't know. Um, but there is a, a good uh, Python library that OpenAI will suggest to you if you want to count your tokens before you send a prompt. But yeah, the takeaway from this, tokens are what's going on behind. Numbers, math, uh, cool stuff. So yeah, what are you going to do with that knowledge? Um, First of all, you'll pay your bills that way because that's how you get charged when you use a, a text-based model from OpenAI. DALI and uh, uh, Whisper uh, are charged a little bit differently because they work completely differently in, in terms of how you input. But uh, just keep in mind, uh, you pay for every thousand tokens. And uh, for people who are not aware, uh, <laughs> for some reason, GPT-4 is much more expensive than GPT-3.5. GPT-3.5 is basically chat GPT 
if you like. And uh, this is the really heavily pushed right now. Uh, you can't really tell from my, uh, from my images here, but 0 0.002 pence cents for a uh, thousand tokens is very cheap we'll see some other prices later and that's really cheap they really want you to use this model right now for stuff and yeah if this is what you're using uh, this is my usage i think from yesterday um it's like 50 cents 72 cents for this month and i have been caning uh chat gpt quite a lot uh but i've been using the free one a lot too why would i spend my own money when i can use free things <laughs> you can cap your spending which is an important thing to know if you're going to make a production app that has a <laughs> an api key inside it but uh if you're going to apply for something like plus be aware it costs extra but it doesn't mean that you get free usage or anything like that you just get more perks uh, you still pay your usage uh, and also you pay the the, the rich guy fee uh, I don't pay for plus, by the way. <laughs> but what are you going to use ChatGPT or GPT or any of these things for? Um, completion usually is what a lot of people will understand from what they will use these tools for. And that's like the underlying service behind ChatGPT. Uh, well, there, there are other services there, but this is the main one that you will uh, probably encounter. And uh, it's really simple too, uh, in a really roundabout way. Uh, I know Teo kind of went into more detail earlier, but you're taking the current tokens a lot of other contextual information and predicting like the next possible parts or the next tokens, not quite like predictive text, but taking the context, what's there and the probabilities of what should come up and some other factors like you see in the picture, um, you will get a result that is probably the most likely result for the thing that you were asking. But again, there is a lot of different factors that can influence what he puts out, but uh, this is the core thing behind all of the things that I'm probably about to talk to you about. Um, if this is what you're interested in, as in you want to use an AI to do cool text-based stuff, uh, probably you don't need ChatGPT unless you want to chat with ChatGPT. Uh, you can use completion to do your single turn things like uh, suggest uh, X given Y or uh, uh, whatever it is. Um, one thing that I'll say now, because I couldn't find another place to put it, was that uh, a prompt goes in, a completion comes out. Uh, be aware, because I'll probably cover, say that a lot and not mention why. But yeah, that's not what ChatGPT is, right? Uh, it's a conversational way of, of working with a GPT. And yeah, exactly. That's the main thing with uh, ChatGPT. It, uh, it does chat completion, which is uh, unlike completion completion, because it's usually a single turn thing where you put one prompt in and get one completion out. This is like a multi-turn thing where you keep putting in prompts and you keep getting out completions. And uh, these are actually labeled in the context of ChatGPT as user or assistant, you or him, or her, uh, and uh, system, which is kind of like uh, the narrator, if you will. And I can touch on that a little bit later. Um, but one thing to note about ChatGPT is that the entire conversation needs to be used as the context. And if that wasn't obvious to you, that's fair. Uh, it, not everyone is aware, but it makes sense immediately whenever you forget to include the entire conversation because the guy doesn't know what you were talking about. Uh, that's kind of obvious. So if you find yourself needing to use a GPT for this kind of thing and you don't need the chat stuff like I just mentioned, uh, these slides are probably in the wrong order. <laughs> you should use Instruct GPT and uh, you should know that uh, these things are cheaper than what I just, apart from DaVinci. Uh, Ada is, is so cheap, it's, it's disgustingly cheap compared to ChatGPT, like a, a quarter of the price. But uh, Ada is also not as good as ChatGPT. Uh, uh, maybe ChatGPT is, is more apparently more on par with DaVinci, uh, or at least the, the higher end of the Instruct GPT table than it is with Ada. But if you only need to do a small single turn thing, uh, do not uh, waste all your money on ChatGPT, please. Uh, however, <laughs> You, it does depend on your needs. Uh, ChatGPT can also do single turn. And I keep saying ChatGPT, and when I say that, I mean ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo and that particular model. Uh, I hope you know that. Um, but it, it totally depends on what you need. Uh, maybe you want to, to use a model for single turn completion, like you need to generate a thing or uh, not take a long stream of context. Uh, you would, you would use this. Uh, uh, sorry, you, you could still use ChatGPT, uh, and it would be like price effective because uh, because of the price I just showed you. But uh, ChatGPT does not support fine tuning. So if you need to actually fine tune a model yourself, uh, you can't use ChatGPT to do that necessarily. Uh, I don't know, maybe you can pay a lot of money to open AI, uh, I, I guess. 
but I, I imagine in the future you will be able to do that. Um, but right now, not an option. Um, but you could take, say, for instance, Ada uh, and, and train her uh, up to be, uh, well, better, I guess, in, in your particular context for chat GPT-esque like scenario. But uh, again, Ada is kind of like, uh, you would have to test it quite a lot and make sure you do a lot of pre-training and, and yeah, I just check it out yourself. Uh, Curie is probably where you would go because he's like uh, competitively priced with uh, chat GPT. Uh, but if you actually want to get to fine tune the models, like I just mentioned, um, yeah, Ada is the only one that still works out cost effective over ChatGPT uh, because Babbage, Curie, and DaVinci all, they are cheap to train in a sense, but they all become more expensive than ChatGPT itself uh, if you start. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> if you am. Um, uh <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. So. If you need to fine tune a model for your own needs, uh, you might start here. You will find out, oh, hey, this is kind of expensive uh, and not that much cheaper than ChatGPT. And uh, at that point, I might tell you, hey, why do you even pay for ChatGPT? <laughs> you can train your own model or, you know, Llama or Alpaca or something like that. Uh, but this is a really good option for people who don't have that option, put it that way. Uh, and also a lovely way to explore and uh, entertain uh, people. But I will say already, I have a demo today and I didn't fine tune a model. Sorry, <laughs> didn't have the time. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't have the time, like me, maybe you might just pre-instruct a model. And that is like a really basic, uh, kind of obvious thing to do. Uh, ChatGPT itself is like pre-instructed with this stuff about him being ChatGPT. It's not like you train a model to know that he's ChatGPT. He's kind of just told to be ChatGPT. And you can kind of do that yourself too. So it really just means like, even with instruct GPT, where you have one message, uh, it basically is just giving previous stuff to your prompt, like uh, saying you're a ChatGPT. A really good example is like, if you just ask ChatGPT what's up, he's like, oh, I'm an AI language model, I don't have feelings. But if you tell him before to like, well, pretend or like be unhelpful or impolite, uh, he will totally do that. And yeah, no problem. Hey, what's up? Not much. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> But this does not get everything you want. And if this starts working for you, you might be like, yeah, fine, print it, ship it. Um, it'll break apart in some really funny ways that you won't be able to really reason about because, well, it's all tokens, right? <laughs> it's just symbols underneath that are kind of being processed in a way that you're not sure. Keep that in mind. Um, and also, I did say, don't forget to keep the full conversation. I had to, to do something stupid. So I did a knock-knock joke. And I say, knock-knock, who's there? You, doctor, doctor who? Oh, you got it. But if you don't do that, He'll tell you what a doctor is. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the dialogue gives like the context for the completion, which is a, an easy way to remember why you should actually uh, include the full uh, uh, conversation. And so earlier than I thought it would be, I am at my demo. <laughs> um, so I uh, did lots of lots of experiments with uh, ChatGPT and GPT-like things. Um, I need to start this guy. And uh, in my oh, that's not it. in my experiments, I uh, geez, in my experiments, I forgot to plug in my phone. <laughs> yes, I started basically making a, a small app to to play with the API. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the details of that now because it's exactly like if you were going to play with ChatGPT yourself. Although I did, uh, there's some emails. I did uh, try to do something that I uh, kind of like thought of as a later stage thing to do with ChatGPT, and that was to make him like an API, because I am an app developer, not a backend developer. I couldn't know about such things, so I did what anyone would do, and I went to ChatGPT and I asked him, "Hey, can you do this for me?" And he said, "Certainly." <laughs> and uh, yeah, with some really basic pre-instruction, which maybe we'll have time to go over. Uh, I was able to tell this guy to basically be a chore bot. And I'm going to like do a live demo, uh, which has not worked several times today, so uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm going to be Alex. I'm going to be Tom. Mm -hmm. And we've got Burton. Burton. Oh, cool. Cool name. Yeah. Can, I, can I call you Bert? <laughs> With a U or a? Oh, yeah. Perfect, perfect. So I've just put Alex, Tom, and Burton in here. And uh, well, it's going to take like a really long time <laughs> because there's a, <laughs> there's a lot going on, I guess. Uh, I guess uh, underneath, I, I can't actually tell you because I don't know. I wrote this API. Oh, sugar. Sorry, you can't see it. 
Hey. <laughs> Thanks. You would, I should have waited until I finished. And then <laughs> okay, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I set up this uh, app to call the API, and then I have this special like API call where I pre-instruct him to be an API. And I just asked him there, I typed in the names, but obviously didn't see. Uh, and now we're waiting for him to schedule uh, like random tasks amongst the three of us. And uh, it should be fair, unless it's crashed. Oh, we got an error. Mm, so here's one of the, the best reasons why you don't use a non-deterministic thing in a demo. <laughs> he actually, instead of, he doesn't do it very, he, doesn't, he does it rarely, but he, he gave me a response instead of JSON there. And one important factor about an AI is that it doesn't just talk to you in plain English. This time he did, so let's try that again uh, and see what happens. It's all there. Don't, don't, don't. No, it's, it's the last one. It broke before. It wasn't supposed to break. It, it did, though. <laughs> but uh, in theory, this time we will get uh, a list of our names and the chores that we have been assigned. And then I just want to make one adjustment to, to the prompt after. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. He really doesn't want to do it. He's just saying, oh, my goodness. Right, maybe it's because... I'm sorry, Burton. I'm going to use a more generic name. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my excuse anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I I, I spent like uh, maybe like 20 minutes before oh, 20 minutes before uh, this demo or the the talk even started, like trying this and kind of stressing like, oh god, it didn't work. Uh, and uh, sometimes, actually, this is a good time to talk about, you will be hitting the API and it'll tell you, oh, it's too busy right now. You can't access that model, uh, which is kind of uh, annoying. Um, one reason why you might not directly offer uh, like a chat GPT powered feature. Oh my goodness. Oh, dude. So really quickly, we're going to check the <laughs> prompt. Yes, basically. I mean, I, I should have just made a, a video. I, I think I did make a video, but I kind of don't want to show that. Uh, let's go with the video. Let's take. So this is kind of what it should have looked like when it came back. Put it that way. Uh, and let's see what I type in, because I can't remember what I did in this video. Even in my video, <laughs> screw it up. <laughs> Oh yeah, so I anticipated being here with Theo and Roland. Uh, and yeah, the, the change that I, I intended to make was to, to call myself lazy. And uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm actually an Android developer. This is a Flutter app, so. <laughs> Put it that way. And uh, well, underneath this, basically, I've told my, uh, my ChatGPT API to treat lazy people differently. and. And what, what has happened here is that he's went, OK, Alex is lazy. We'll give him less tasks. And so Roland and Theo have now got all of the tasks, <laughs> which is fantastic for me because I'm so lazy. Way, <laughs> way. That is what should have happened. I, I'll try it one more time just because. Uh, and I'll try Alex, Theo, and Roland. Why not? Maybe, maybe, maybe those names just work for some reason. In the API, you've already yeah, just like, yeah, if, <laughs> if no, Theo and Roland, yeah. Exactly. Oh, no, that, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I, and I can talk about the prompt. Uh, I, so I did um, put, like, I, I tried a bunch of different things to develop this prompt. Uh, and one thing I did let him do was generate the tasks themselves, himself. But uh, he has, like, internal understanding of the tasks he generates. And he would maybe generate a task that is, like, I don't know, like, easier uh, on, the, on the cusp. But actually, we don't, we don't really understand that we just see text right now in this demo so if we like had some extra like data about like how long it took to do each task it might be a more interesting kind of thing that comes out here okay. but uh yeah this is a demo so <laughs> this time it actually worked well, hey uh so i got i got an equal uh like set of tasks there for for myself and yeah it, it seems like these names are just <laughs> the, the names to pick so uh if you need to use uh test names in your uh, in your demos please uh use these <laughs> Uh, and then, since you saw it in the video, we'll try it here again. Du, du, du. It's the old error. It keeps coming up. <laughs> but yeah, um, 
I, I honestly don't really see many people making APIs with ChatGPT. I just know that every person out there is trying to put ChatGPT in their API. So I thought this was a nice analog, at least to say, like, uh, there's stuff going on here that oh, I broke again, right? Screw that. <laughs> There's stuff going on here that isn't always uh, obvious and uh, it's non-deterministic. So you really can't get, uh, rely on the response that you get. But there's a lot more still that we can do that I didn't do for this demo uh, because I didn't have time. But I did already mention fine tuning and pre-training. Um, I will now briefly touch on embeddings and plugins. Uh, but after I describe these things, I hope you'll be with me in imagining, oh, what a wonderful world we'll live in with when these products come out. There must be some cool things on the way. The first one, I didn't mean to add an animation, is embeddings. Uh, wow. This is just like the first diagram I showed you with the, the GPT. It also will be in the test. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, well, actually, this is, this, is, this is for embedding. It's a different thing altogether. But an embedding is a vector kind of uh, distance between two uh, strings. And that's really abstract and weird. What you might use that for is like taking a piece of text and figuring out how relevant it is for some other piece of text. Uh, which is very useful in situations like a document search or like a code search or stuff like that. Classification is a really good one. Uh, and I actually always had this theory at the start that ChatGPT was kind of like, because it has these different services you can call to do edits and stuff like that. I thought ChatGPT might have been trying to embed every uh, input that it got and then figure out which service it should call, but that's not the case. ChatGPT is just really good. Uh, <laughs> so you could, though, set up something that took a prompt from a user and maybe like figured out what it, they needed to do with that based on your system, like if you had a, an API to query. Uh, but this is requiring a lot of kind of setup. Uh, if you, uh, I think one example they used was Amazon's uh, uh, product reviews, and you could use embeddings to kind of figure out like what uh, a review might be rated, like uh, it might be four stars or three stars, or if you reviewed this way, then you might this product, that sort of thing, all that stuff. Um, it's a really cool feature that is already, I guess, being used in other ways, but they have uh, a, an easy to use API to hit for it. So just like everything else in this demo, it's uh, on a cloud server somewhere that you can just hit with your API key. It's not, uh, it's not something you need to have on your fancy computer in the office storeroom. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, the other thing which I, I like, I was on the wait list for this, uh, and I, I really hope to have something uh, to show you guys. Uh, but for plugins for ChatGPT, uh, I don't. I, I don't know why my I didn't intentionally add these transitions. So <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a random uh, setup. Uh, yeah, Wolfram Alpha was one of the first ones that I caught wind of. Um, and yeah, this is a Pokemon example, but I think we all know we can use well, Wolfram Alpha is like a really powerful computation tool. And you can use that then to compute, like, I don't know, the speed of space or something like that. And Wolfram Alpha will draw you a graph and, and give you the large numbers and do a lot of really cool stuff. And having that uh, factual, useful, hardcore tool inside something as open-ended as ChatGPT is really freaking cool, uh, interesting. But I think for a lot of people that uh, developers will talk to, uh, clients, uh, they will want a plugin of some description that talks to ChatGPT or that ChatGPT talks to to get their data and maybe do something with it and give some response, which makes a lot of sense. But I, I, I'm actually not sure how this is going to pan out, to be honest. Uh, I've seen some cool uh, public and open uh, plugins. But uh, as far as private uh, client things are going, I'm not 100% sure that this will be the answer for that. Uh, I hope so, though, basically. But yeah, um, if you didn't know, Bing uh, is way, way ahead of this somehow, uh, because they basically bought OpenAI. <laughs> and uh, it uses GPT-4, and it's free. And it also is using Bing, I guess, as a plugin. And it will look up stuff for you. And I, I asked uh, Bing GPT, do you use Wolfram Alpha? And it told me it did. I haven't seen it do any <laughs> Wolfram Alpha stuff yet. But yeah, Bing GPT is like a little bit different itself, I would say. Um, play with that if you are interested in ChatGPT and see what you think of, uh, of the difference, because it's a uh, it has a, a personality, I would say. But yeah, um, given that we can have uh, assistance with personalities that don't exist and that we can embed and uh, plug stuff into everything and make APIs that don't work, what will happen next? I mean, yeah, everything will happen next that we can imagine, obviously, within the current scope of what we can develop. But all of these things can link up very well to provide a really like uh, powerful marketing service, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> you can use a lot of different information about a user. And I mean, it's kind of 
really scares me. I mean, you shouldn't necessarily be afraid of this technology, but knowing what you can do with analytics already and stuff like that, I'm kind of like a little bit concerned about what is going to happen next with, with like data, basically. But um, yeah, don't get too concerned just yet. Uh, I do agree with Teo. <laughs> and uh, I also think that uh, a lot of the things that are happening right now are just going to burst. Uh, like all of those stupid uh, uh, ChatGPT client apps, like the one I showed you at the start, that has a million downloads. I wonder how many more downloads it'll get now. Uh, probably a lot, actually, because it has GPT in the name, but still. And then if we are getting to the point where we might think about like, oh, well, we can use this thing inside this, I hope we never get to the point where we could hurt someone with that. What happens if your doctor is actually a GPT kind of influence thing and he's prescribing you stuff and he's just like hallucinating, you know, like your doctor would do if your doctor's hallucinating? Uh, it's kind of something you should avoid. Uh, so as, as quick as I am to want to use all of these things and, and put them together and see how they work, I'm like really afraid about what like people are going to do to earn money with them. So I kind of think that like legislation is a really good thing in some ways. In this case, it's not always a bad thing. Um, it can really be a bad thing. And I think the EU has its, its own issues with, with, with disrupting people with their disruptive laws. But OpenAI have released this really powerful, well, this really amazingly useful tool that anyone can kind of access and do stuff with. They can use it to break all kinds of existing things. I mean, think about it. Uh, there's lots of stuff out there that just kind of worked. Uh, people knew about it, but not everyone knew about it. And a lot of people will maybe want to figure out how to break it, stuff like that. They do have their own built-in stuff, but you can like, almost always with chat, not almost always, but a lot with ChatGPT is like, no, I can't do that. And you say, but yeah, but pretend you can. And he goes, okay, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> and he can. He's like, I, I don't want to give you this. It's really ethically bad. But if I was going to give you this, it would be like that. And you won't always get that, but you, you f will find yourself finding ways around this like internal moderation that is there. And if I can do that, this hat, you know, anyone can do that with any amount of money and lawyers and stuff. Uh, so that is kind of a concern. So I, I do like to see the world scrambling to, like, and I put it this way, constrain uh, the, the like development of AI, because it will not stop, obviously. Uh, but I, I, I would like to see a little bit more protection in place for like common users, and at least agreements that we don't use these things in situations like medical or other stuff like that, for obvious reasons. Because it is just so open to abuse uh, so easily by so many people. Even OpenAI kind of admit themselves that they are, uh, well, not kind of, they literally make this a thing on their <laughs> website, like, yeah, our models encode social biases. Hey. <laughs> Uh, th you, there is more elaboration to this. I just thought this was a more punchier line to put, but like they, they kind of favor like you know white European men uh, over like African American women, and I think they say that in like those words basically on their website. I don't, I'm not quoting exactly, but th I think we've already had a lot of horror stories. When I was in university, like a long time ago, I remember all these like when critical systems fail stories, like you know, when a, a missile detection system shoots down a, a, an airplane. That was like years ago. What, this is going to happen again a lot more now. Uh, like, wait till we see. <laughs> so I, I predict more horror stories, basically. Especially when there's this land grab or this AI wars or whatever you want to call what's going on right now. But there's a lot of like big weight, big, like heavyweight fighting going on. Uh, and in that time, there will be a lot of like fast decisions made that will kind of impact us, I guess, in ways. Uh, and maybe legislation won't cover that. So it is really on you guys to start paying really close attention to what it is that you give and what you read and what you do, obviously, on the internet. So thanks for listening. Uh, Do you have time for questions, I think. Hey, um, I had two questions. Uh, one was, should we avoid putting like confidential information or data into it then, even if you're like a paid user? Yes, 100%. I mean, um, well, right. Uh, I had a conversation with someone else earlier, I think, about how they did say that they are not using your input anymore to improve the output. Yeah, and especially if you're paying for it, I don't think you Yeah, it. but <laughs> um, GPT, for example. But if you have like a client or something, or you have confidential information, don't give that to the internet. Like, don't, don't put that in ChatGPT. Unless you have like a model you run locally uh, that you control you, yeah. all the inputs and stuff, all you have otherwise is kind of like this vague terms of service kind of agreement. Unless you talk to them directly and they tell you, yeah, 
none of your data will be shared. But do you trust that, really? Uh, if your data is critical or confidential, then it shouldn't be shared. So you might want to protect it by bringing uh, the power of ChatGPT into your API via like a plugin or something like that. Or you might, another idea I had would be like to pre-train a model to use your API. So given like some input, you tell the model like, oh, well that means query this SQL command. Make it like confidential yeah. and then put it to yeah. GPT. Yeah, basically. So there are ways to get around that. Just don't like throw it straight in there. You could do that and it would work, uh, but don't do that. <laughs> basically. And, and Good, good, because I, I guess I did that. Um, and I, I started with like Ada, and she was like uh, really fast, super fast. Like, and if I had maybe spent like a few days like pre-training and stuff, I could have got there, but that actually would have been more expensive. And I, I can't do that on the free version, so I, I kind of didn't really get into that yet. But I think uh, I would do that personally, or I would experiment maybe with like Llama or Alpaca or something and, and have it like locally and maybe just get rid of OpenAI. Yeah, the GPT-4, really powerful tool. Again, obviously, like, they showed a really good uh, uh, graph there that kind of showed you. But again, it's like OpenAI is like uh, the, the current leader of this, and they have really cool toys. But they are kind of even getting old, and uh, other toys are coming, uh, you know. So keep, keep in mind what could come out tomorrow. And don't commit too much to like OpenAI just yet, is what I would say. Basically, just that Pokemon thing, <laughs> and the article from uh, Wolfram themselves, uh, which just like it, it wasn't like uh, I haven't seen any implementations because honestly, I haven't seen any like real client implementations yet. You know, personally, uh, but uh, I I would see that being used like in industrial places probably, and like you know, like real steel jobs, not like uh, like writing a blog post or like you know. We'll say you're doing stress testing. Okay. Like immediately you're like, oh yeah, there's so many calculations I don't have to do because I can describe the properties of an object and then you know, it's gonna kind of spit out the answers for me. So the reason why you might train a model to do something for you is so that you can kind of poke it so that it, it, it gives you the right thing or, or right. what you're interested in at least. It might not be the answer, but it's something that is uh, extrapolated from the way it was trained and what you asked it. And then how would you verify that? What do you mean? Like that's a really easy to verify one, I think, uh, a stress okay. test. Uh, but that's a good question. Uh, that was a bad answer, but a good question. Yeah, uh, Wolfram is your ultimate, uh, let's say, authority. How do you test whether the, the answer is actually correct? Wolfram's not an authority, I would say. It's just a really useful tool that is now also plugged in in some ways to, it's available through some means in sure, ChatGPT. Sure, sure, sure. So right. if you can have something like that, then you could have your own thing or some other thing or the next authority on whatever it is, uh, stress testing, space okay. stuff. Uh, I haven't seen something that uses no, no, I haven't, no. I've only, I've only seen the article, and, and yeah, I will say already, uh, Bing, because uh, it, it says it uses Wolfram Alpha, so I guess, uh, okay. I guess that's true, right? How do you verify that? <laughs> but it does do a lot of cool stuff, and yeah, I don't know if I said it exactly, but Bing is using plugins uh, already, and I, they're not saying exactly what it's doing, so uh, uh, most likely it's a slightly different model, and it uses more stuff than we think. Uh, I would say. Bing. Yes. Notwithstanding the current land grab that business takes, yes. do you have any thoughts or visions for the future how we may overcome the biases that are built into those models? Oh, uh, yeah, oh <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, unless we all agree to like not do that, not be like biased or not use tri biased data, it's really difficult. Like, in fact, a lot of the problem really comes down to the fact that the data isn't always available for all of the sets. And I thought a good example of that was like Tesla and smart driving cars. And I thought this was kind of a bad example, but smart driving cars are better at detecting lighter skin, which is like stupid, but it's like, it's inherent in the way they train their system. They trained it on lighter skinned people. So it's like, unless you get every person in the world to agree to, to, to do the same thing, you're, you're never gonna have the same thing. It's the same with software engineering. You can't get people to agree on coding standards. Uh, and that's basically what you're doing. You're like coding a model by, you know, training it uh, in a sense, so sometimes. It's not so about the actual raw data set, it's more about how you train the model. Well, yeah, you can have uh, like post, uh, well, 
to because God data set and training very intertwined there. Uh, but um, how it processes the training set and how it is trained, they are important things, yeah. But um, if you're using something image related anyway, obviously you just need images to, to show it. Maybe <laughs> the stable diffusion can help there and you can be models training models again. But um, I, I personally, anyway, I'm not an ethics guy. I don't see this being a solvable problem without some serious, like, scary laws <laughs> that, that maybe would be quite disruptive at that point. Um, and they would never stop me from making a model that treats lazy people differently either. Um, so it's something that I guess we have to accept going forwards, but still like uh, seek to change, uh, like with democratized data sets, open training data sets. I'm, I, don't, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not the expert, I'm an Athro developer. <laughs> but uh, definitely something will have to change uh, because at some point someone will get really upset or something really bad will happen and it's going to be such a big deal that we just need to, to address it, I would say. That's my prediction, not, not a fact. <laughs> All biases won't be addressed because of the, like, AI is kind of a black box. And exactly. Your example, like, you can tell, okay, it's colored skin, but you don't actually know what variables it's taking into account. True, that's, that's really true, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously used a very, like, oversimplified yeah. thing there. Uh, it's using, like, eigenvectors underneath, and it's, like, trying to, like, feature detection and stuff like that. But, um, on the face of it, as far as we're aware, it's a black box. It does all this math underneath that, that we don't fully understand. So yeah, those biases are like, uh, they might as well be as fundamental as the numbers themselves at this point, because they're built into the way that those models are used. Those models won't last forever, but well, they actually will, but maybe they won't be used forever. Uh, so maybe someday, maybe next week, we'll be looking back at, at those models and going, hey, that was so bad. Uh, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> Oh, yeah. so. There is this sort of token limit for like ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you envision people working with like large data sets, a lot of text? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, don't use ChatGPT with large data sets, Un unless your large data set was a large chat, uh, basically. But you're kind of constrained there. I mentioned like instruct GPT and stuff. They, they don't support uh, as large a token range as like GPT-4, because you can get like 8K and is it 32K or 16K? I can't remember, but it was in, it was actually in one of my slides. But the, with GPT-4, you get vastly larger uh, token context setting, but it's uh, very expensive that way. Say you are giving it like 8,000 tokens. Well, that's, you know, eight times whatever the 1,000 tokens cost is. So you're already looking at cents per request at that point. Maybe there's a better way is all I would say. Uh, maybe if you need to do that, have your own model, train it on your own data, and then hit it with your own API. And it costs you nothing at that point, apart from the electricity. But if you want to learn how to do it first, you could start here, because it's a nice API. It's a pretty straightforward API to use, and uh, it, it will teach you all the basic concepts. But if you ever want to get serious with using this on your real data set, I would say don't. Just think about it some other way first. Maybe plug into this somehow, but don't, uh, don't, don't use it straight up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. um, I'm trying to think like, how do we regulate like other stuff we don't understand? Uh, like we don't basically, or we have uh, very uh, vague uh, guidelines around it uh, that could be perceived in such a way that in a court case it makes sense. Uh, right. For for me, as someone like developer oriented, I don't really care. <laughs> but I I am concerned definitely about about how that will go down. Um, and I am really like missing Bard anyway. I didn't get to try him out yet uh, because he's like illegal in the EU. So I I know for a start that will have to change because like people will want to get around that and get into EU market with their tools. But um, on the other hand. Uh, a lot of more people will become a lot more aware of what's going on and that will make pressure on pol politics and that'll make pressure on laws and it'll, it'll be a really big thing I think in the EU. Uh, I, I can't say anything about America, I, I have no idea. I have family there but I have nothing, no idea about the law. Um, I would imagine uh, if there's profit there will be uh, regulations uh, and OpenAI have commanded a lot of profit 
uh, in a short space of time. So that's why I think Elon Musk is like, hey, slow down, like I want some of this money. I need to <laughs> recoup 46 billion, so you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that doesn't mean they. In theory, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, and I, and I would love to have a not-for-profit that's worth billions and billions and billions, and you know, uh, yeah, like who wouldn't? Uh, basically, uh, if you ever want to give one up. Um <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're right. That is that is true. And and one thing I I like about OpenAI, and one reason why I kind of was happy to get involved with with ChatGPT over kind of going other ways was like, this is a, uh, I at least initially viewed them as like a the kind of like central point for all this new wave uh, generative AI stuff. Uh, since I got in there, I kind of like, I'm really bored of it now, to be honest. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward for like uh, the new tools that are coming out all the time, basically. Uh, so um, yeah, well, I, uh, I hope that, that it doesn't stay forever. Uh, OpenAI as the top dog or uh, even a not-for-profit because it kind of legitimizes them as like the I don't know. Yeah, they're not actually, I mean, they're not for profit. That's probably a business model, really. Uh, but I I, uh, I still admire those guys. And uh, I also uh, am happy they're pushing for the legislation and stuff like that. Um, but aside from that, um, as, as a, a child playing with really cool toys, uh, like, I don't care. <laughs> it's, uh, the next one will come out soon. Uh, and there'll be a bigger company. I hope it's not Microsoft, the, the takeover, is all I can say, <laughs> basically. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very optimistic end. Do you want to see the prompt for the API? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I pre-instructed him with all of this stuff. And uh, yeah, I think someone asked. Like, uh, I, did, I did initially tell him to generate the chores, but uh, these are just chores I gave him. Uh, he, he was told very, very clearly to only respond in JSON formatted messages, but he obviously ignored that at one point. <laughs> Three times in a row, uh, hilariously. And uh, yeah, actually, one thing about this, um, he really is number blind. Uh, it didn't happen when I showed you guys, but I, I do this sometimes, and he assigns like 200 chores, well, not like 20 chores, or like a, like an, an, a stupid amount. I, I give him like, a, say, three people, 15 chores, easy math, right? And he still manages to do like six, eight, and six or something, and like, where did you get that from? And uh, like this, on the face of it, I, I wanted to make this really simple thing that could just be turned against you. Uh, and actually, I wanted it to be like a, if you support Ajax, then you get more tasks. That was the original plan. <laughs> but uh, the, it, it, like adding multiple variables this way was kind of really difficult. And I think even with uh, this length of prompt, and I, that might look long to you, but we were just talking about having like 8K prompts, you know, 8K token prompts, things like that. Uh, th this, isn't, this isn't really that long. Uh, and it could be shortened. Uh, I, I asked several GPTs uh, how to shorten this, and they gave me obviously different answers every time. Uh, but this one kind of worked out the best even though there's stuff I disagree with in it, actually. Uh, and I did try to change later, but I, uh, I think maybe I broke it <laughs> was the problem. But yeah, th this, uh, th this is kind of cool in that you could write an API with this much code. Uh, but I would still personally rather <laughs> just write the API with like proper code. Uh, and that, but if I wanted to make an API that did scheduling, I would probably make a plugin that would look up my chores and my people if the people didn't come in in the prompt. And then I would use that like response with ChatGPT to like give a, a personalized response message. But in this case, like personalizing the JSON isn't really important at all. Like this thing, the only thing that's happening here that it, I need ChatGPT for that I don't want to do myself is the scheduling. And if you look at how I described the scheduling, I told him to do it like equally or randomly or like something really basic. And it, it was still kind of difficult actually. Um, so I, I started off thinking yeah, this would be easy, but it, it wasn't really actually. Uh, so there is that. Um, and yeah, the, the implicit biases, uh, I didn't, didn't really get into too much about this in particular, but like he's understanding like vacuuming the living room takes less time than uh, say taking out the trash. I don't know if that's exactly, but when I, uh, when I did some earlier iterations of this prompt, I was trying things like uh, availability time, uh, I think he's still in there, and I was giving like times and people and stuff, and then it was kind of reacting in the right way. Uh, but sometimes it would still give like, f like six tasks to one person, but they were all shorter tasks, uh, objectively, subjectively, uh, which it took me a while to figure out what was going on there. Um, and you know what? I could be wrong about that. There could be something else going on all together that I have no idea. So be aware. Uh, don't don't try to do this unless it's for a, a demo, uh, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Sorry, uh, if you run, for example, Alex, it's already hard working for you. Yeah. Do you understand uh, based on that uh, lazy people should be assigned that? 
Yeah. Yeah, and I, I did also do, and I, I'm not going to try it again now, just <laughs> I'll try it later. Uh, but uh, I did try other things like is disabled or like is X, is Y, is Z. And yeah, he is reacting to what's going on there. And I did not explain that. But